in the name of Allah, the merciful, the beneficent. Now of the main headlines. Free Muslim calls on the international community to update their laws on women's rights. Pakistani authorities detain more than 1,400 Afghan refugees and assault women and the elderly. Increasing demand for halal trade in the United States. Commencement of installation works of the concrete pillars for Ummul Benin Peace Be Upon Her Courtyard project. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah dear viewers, this is Ayyub and you are watching Shia Waves live from Imam Hussein TV3. The international non-violence organization Free Muslim called on the international community, human rights organizations and democratic governments to update their laws and procedures for women's rights. Calling for justice for this group, especially in conflict areas in the Middle East. In its message, which was received by Shia Waves News Agency, the organization stated that human rights reports during the past few years indicate growing violations in terms of the human rights of women, especially those represented by physical and moral violence and the forced deprivation of rights guaranteed by international and local constitutions and laws. It added that women in general are subjected to multifaceted attacks, many of which are kept secret due to fear, while similar women are subjected to killing, arrest and humiliation for political or social reasons, in addition to other violations in some countries of the Middle East. The organization stressed the importance of the United Nations and the International Council for Human Rights to give special attention and focused care in terms of follow-up support and supposed care for women around the world and making more serious efforts to help them face these challenges. The control of the Taliban terrorist movement on power in Afghanistan prompted many segments, including those working in government, jobs and persecuted minorities such as Shia Muslims, to head towards neighbouring Pakistan as a first step in their search for safety. According to media reports, followed by Shia Waves News Agency, these Afghans did not wait long until they began to face great pressure and a number of them were subjected to repeated assaults by the Pakistani authorities and hundreds of them were imprisoned even women and the elderly. Circulating video clips showed that Afghan refugees were subjected to many violations in Pakistan, while the number of detainees reached more than 1,400 Afghan refugees, and the Pakistani government did not show any clear policy in this context. For their part, former Afghan officials stated, the main problem is the lack of a clear policy towards Afghan refugees. The Pakistani government opened the Spin Boldak port for Afghans and allowed them to enter without papers, only to be surprised after that harsh treatment, tying refugees with ropes and taking them to prisons. Activists and human rights organizations called on the Pakistani government to follow an appropriate and clear policy towards Afghan refugees, either not to allow them to enter in the first place or to treat them in a humane and decent manner as long as they are allowed to enter. At the same time, the Minister of Immigrants to the Taliban government, Haji Khalil Rahman Haqqani, demanded from the Shahjdi Affairs of the Pakistani ambassador in Kabul that his country review its policies with Afghans, especially those who go to receive treatment such as cancer patients. Now joining us live from Frankfurt, Germany, migration and development expert Sultan Ali Javid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Mr. Javid, thank you for joining us. Now, with the Afghans facing this dilemma and crisis, how is the United Nations reacting to all of this? Uh, Assalamu uh, alaikum. Uh, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. Uh, I think this question uh, must go to the United Nations to answer for this question. And uh, they have to say that how they can support the refugees. But uh, based on my experience uh, in the past, United Nations never had uh, such a strong um, measure or reaction against the arrestment of Afghan refugees in Pakistan. We have been uh, many times witness of uh, 
uh, harassment of Afghan, uh, including women and children in that country. This was one of the uh, very hot agenda uh, topics when the government of Afghanistan used to discuss with the with the Pakistani authorities during the uh, APAPS meeting and uh, solution strategy meetings. And why has Pakistan assaulted and imprisoned the Afghan refugees whom they allowed to enter in the first place? Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, the border between the two countries used to be open all the time, but uh, sometimes Pakistan uh, is more flexible to get more refugees in, uh, in the country and uh, their immigration policy is not that much strong. This is a, it has an economic aspect as well that Afghans uh, can go freely to Pakistan and buy and purchase and sometimes they send the patients there to, for the treatments. But I think two main factors can be uh, can be uh, answered for this question. First is that Pakistan uses refugees as a tool for the political pressure against Afghanistan, especially when there is no legitimized government of Afghanistan. I think refugee phenomena has uh, to be a humanitarian case, not in a political case. But unfortunately, during the course of time, we have seen many times that the Pakistani government is using um, the Afghan refugees is a tool to put more pressure on the government of Afghanistan. I think the second, the second factor could be uh, uh, the, these measures are actually a message to the donors, uh, who the, the traditional donors that uh, used to support the Afghan refugee in Afghanistan. So in this way, they want to inject more money into the Pakistan economy under the uh, pretext of uh, supporting Afghan refugees. Million of dollars uh, used to be uh, uh, allocated for the Afghan refugee, which was so called the humanitarian support for Afghan refugees. But still, Afghan refugees' life is not changed in that country for many times. And uh, still, the poor, the people are so poor, and uh, the refugees do not get enough support as much as they're getting support from the donors in that country. And in your opinion, what do you think is going to happen to those detained refugees? Are they going to be released and sent back to their country or are they going to continue being attacked and assaulted? Yeah, this is a good question. I think um, uh, Afghan refugees in Pakistan uh, was always uh, 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 a tool for the Pakistani to train more uh, terrorists in that, in that country. They are, usually had this uh, Pani Madrasas there and they trained most of the Taliban over there. But unfortunately, Afghan refugees do not have any support at the moment. Afghan refugees do not have any support from a legitimized government. And even they do not have a support from the UN as well. I think most of them will remain in the jail till they become, uh, become ready to work with the Pakistani. What they want to say them, what I think uh, the, uh, maybe Pakistan have a plan uh, to train most of these uh, people and send them back to Afghanistan to fight uh, against uh, the people in Afghanistan. Mr. Javid, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for your insights. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you very thank much. You very much. All the best. All the best. Thank, you. thank you. Sultan Ali Javid joining us live from Frankfurt, Germany there. Over the past two decades alone, halal trade has jumped to more than $2.2 trillion in value around the world. The rapid growth has made it an attractive investment sector for manufacturers and producers of various types of commodities. Specialists believe that the acceleration of the growth of halal goods and services in Western countries, the most important of which is the United States of America, came as a result of many factors the most important of which is the increase in the number of immigrants from Islamic countries, including Arab ones, in addition to the high profit margin for companies operating in the trade of halal goods in the West. Halal trade accounted for about 4% of the total world trade, according to the State of the World Economy report issued by the Dinner Standard. Now let us remind our respected viewers of today's headlines. Free Muslim calls on the international community to update their laws on women's rights. Pakistani authorities detain more than 1,400 Afghan refugees and assault women and the elderly. Increasing demand for halal trade in the United States of America.
also tonight. Chinese authorities appear to ease up on Islamic worship in Xinjiang in wake of international criticism. The installation works of the concrete pillars for the Ummul Banin Peace Be Upon Her Courtyard project have begun, next to the Holy Shrine of Abul Fadl Abbas Peace Be Upon Him. The Secretary General of the Holy Shrine, Mustafa Diya Ad-Din, said in a statement followed by Shia Waves News Agency, the Engineering Projects Department at the Holy Shrine began to install the concrete pillars for the project of the courtyard of Ummul Banin Peace Be Upon Her at a depth of 12 meters. He added that the work continues day and night in order to complete this project as quickly as possible, stressing that the remaining real estates within the boundaries of the courtyard of Ummul Banin, peace be upon her, will be acquired. Dia ad expressed his hope that civil works will continue at an accelerated pace in order to provide additional spaces for the honourable pilgrims on the massive pilgrimages every year as well as Thursday nights. And now we continue with some short news. Oman's largest mosque for Shia Muslims was inaugurated in a ceremony in the capital Muscat. The endowments minister Muhammad Saeed Al Ma'mari was among those attending the inauguration event. There were also Shia and Sunni, scho Sunni scholars from Oman and a number of other Arab countries, according to the website of the World Forum for Proximity of Islamic Schools of Thought. The Jamia as Salam Mosque in Muscat has been built on a 30,000 square meter plot of land and with its building area measuring at 12,820 square meters. The endowments department in Al Lawatiya area has commissioned the construction of the mosque. Oman is a country situated in Southwest Asia, bordering the Arabian Sea, Gulf of Oman and Persian Gulf between Yemen and the United Arab Emirates. A copy of the Holy Qur'an attributed to Imam Ali, peace be upon him, was put on display at the recent Islamic Art Festival in Lahore, Pakistan. The international event witnessed the participation of several Muslim countries and featured different fields and aspects of Islamic art, including Islamic calligraphy and Quranic manuscripts. The Qur'an manuscript attributed to the first Shia Imam, peace be upon him, has displayed along with other manuscripts from the Imam al-Rida Holy Shrine Museum. The four-day International Islamic Art Festival was organized by Lahore Arts Council, Al-Hamra and Pakistan Arts Council, Karachi. Delegates and intellectuals, scholars and artists from Pakistan and other Muslim countries, including Turkey, Iran, Yemen and Saudi Arabia, participated in the festival. Several Muslim gravestones have been vandalized in northern Germany on Tuesday, according to the chief of an Islamic association. We have received some visuals showing that some Muslim gravestones in the Stockholm Cemetery in the city northern state of Lower Saxony city of Hanover were vandalized, the leader of the Shora Association, Recep Bilgen, told news agencies. He said the group visited the cemetery and informed authorities and asked them to investigate why the gravestones were damaged. Bilgen drew attention to the fact that vandalization incidents in Muslim cemeteries have become more common in recent years. Bilgen said because of those attacks, the case should be investigated. As part of its ongoing humanitarian initiatives, the Al Mustafa Cultural and Charitable Foundation affiliated with the Supreme Religious Authority in the city of Mazar Sharif, Afghanistan, gifted quantities of winter clothes to poor families living in the poor neighborhoods of the city. The aforementioned work comes due to the cold weather and the onset of winter, as well as due to the dire economic problems of the citizens of Afghanistan, and based on the recommendations of the Supreme Religious Authority, His Eminence Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq al Hussein al Shirazi, regarding the necessity of caring for the needy and the poor. The Office of Grand Ayatollah Shirazi in Dejef participates in a symposium on digital currency. A member of the Office of the Supreme Religious Authority, his Eminence Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq al Hussein al Shirazi in the holy city of Najaf, Iraq, Hujjat al Islam Sheikh Saleh al Halfi participated in a symposium held on electronic shopping and digital currencies. 
A group of Iraqi youth attended and participated in the symposium, and the member of the Office of His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi, spoke about the Bitcoin digital currency from the jurisprudential point of view. Some of the attendees at this symposium also asked a number of questions about the topic, which Sheikh Al Halfi answered. Chinese authorities appear to ease up on Islamic worship in Xinjiang in wake of international criticism. Chinese authorities in the restive northwestern region of Xinjiang began scaling back their crackdown on religion in early 2020 by reopening some mosques they previously shut down during the height of religious persecution in 2017. Further details in the following report. Most Uyghurs in Xinjiang have not returned to mosques that Chinese authorities have reopened for limited religious services in response to heavy international criticism of repressive policies targeting the mostly Muslim ethnic group, according to local and international sources. Authorities in the rest of northwestern region began scaling back their crackdown on religion in early 2020 by reopening some mosques they previously shut down during the height of religious persecution in 2017. The change occurred after the United States and the parliaments of some Western countries declared China's repression of the Uyghurs, including arbitrary detainment and serious human rights violations amounted to genocide and crimes against humanity. In late August, the United Nations Human Rights Chief issued a report into the accusations and concluded that the repression may constitute international crimes and particular crimes against humanity. Despite the softened stance towards Islam in Xinjiang, most Uyghurs who lost confidence in China's religious policy that officially recognises five religions including Islam because of the crackdown have refrained from returning to the reopened houses of worship. Two thirds of Afghan households have difficulties meeting their basic food needs according to a new World Bank survey which showed precarious living conditions for families in the country. The investigation examined the living conditions of the Afghan population between June and August this year, the Khama Press News Agency reported. A statement from the institution noted that the outlook is horrible for Afghanistan due to the continuing problems and high levels of food insecurity, which have been detrimental on the economy as well as on the Afghans themselves, particularly women and girls. Melinda Good, the World Bank's director for Afghanistan, said it is very worrying to see most Afghan households facing enormous financial constraints, while access to education remains very limited, especially for girls. The report concluded that the increase in food prices and the persistent consequences of the drought in the country, which limit affordability and access to food, are making it very difficult for two-thirds of the Afghan population to put food on their table. Ahlul Bayt followers from Iraq continue to flock to the house of the Shirazi religious authority in the holy city of Qom in Iran. The official website of the Supreme Religious Authority, Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq al Hussein al Shirazi, in a statement received by Shia Waves News Agency, said that the house of the Supreme Religious Authority received groups of believers who came from Wasit and Tawarij in Iraq and met his eminence. The statement added during their presence in his noble house, the believers held mourning ceremony on the martyrdom anniversary of Sayyidah Fatima al Zahra, peace be upon her, and listened to a speech delivered by Sheikh Ja'far Askar, after which they participated in the daily scientific session of His Eminence, Grand Ayatollah Shirazi. We have reached the end of today's Share Wave show. Let's remind our viewers of today's headlines. Free Muslim calls on the international community to update their laws on women's rights. Pakistani authorities detain more than 1,400 Afghan refugees and assault women and the elderly. Increasing demand for halal trade in the United States of America. Commencement of installation works of the concrete pillars for Ummul Benin Courtyard Project.
World Bank, living conditions in Afghanistan are terrible. Ahlul Bayt's followers from Iraq visit Grand Ayatollah Shirazi in Holy Qom. You can view the latest news on Share Wave's website and you can send news of your city or country to be published on our news agency. Please contact us on the numbers at the bottom of the screen. This is the end of today's news and thank you all for watching. We pray to Allah Almighty to hasten the reappearance of the master of our time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.